ich Jakob Schütt. I work for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, also called FAO. Uh, to those who may know, it's the specialized agency of the United Nations that deals with agriculture, fishery, forestry, agriculture, rural development, food and nutrition security, and issues like that. FAO has not traditionally worked on specifically on explicitly on migration issues, but FAO is also beginning to think about the implications of you know, the growing international debate about migration, what are the implications of migration for FAO's work, and uh, how can we better integrate migration concerned into what we are doing. One of the elements of, uh, of this um, approach is the preparation of a, a FAO major flagship report on, 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 on migration. Uh, what I'm referring to is the State of Food and Agriculture. It's the annual FAO report that has been published on an annual basis since 1947. Each of the reports has a thematic focus, um, and this is sort of meant to be a policy document that is directed to member governments, to FAO meetings, media, national sites. So we are directed toward policy makers. Uh, so we want a short, focused, evidence-based you know, document that is policy relevant, like make a contribution to the policy debates on, um, on, on migration within the areas that are relevant for FAO's uh, specific uh, mandate. So the 2018 edition of this will be on migration. The sort of provisional title we have is Rural Migration, Agriculture and, and Rural Development. We're in the process of preparing the document. We're sort of initial stages. What I would like to share with you are the ideas, what we're planning to do with the document, what are some of the challenges we're facing, and what are some preliminary data on, on, on rural migration we're coming up with. And then we'll have, have this, we very much appreciate feedback from you as well that can help us make a report that is more, that is more relevant and, and useful. So first of all, now why are we doing a document like this? FAO has not really dealt with migration issues. First of all, of course, we have there's a major international attention to migration. This reflects in the SDGs, SDG, SDG 10, in which was calls for facilitating orderly, safe, regular, and responsible migration. It's also, we have the New York Declaration from uh, 2016 that called for the development of, of a couple of two global compacts on on migrants and, and, and refugees. So FAO has tried to position itself within this and make a contribution to the debate within this, uh, this context. We also find there is a lot of international attention to migration, but particularly to international migration, okay? But reality, we find that migration is a much, much larger issue. It's the internal migration dimension is extremely important, and the rural dimension of that is particularly significant as well. The rural migration, rural migration to and from, from, from rural areas. We want to bring more attention to this area as well. Thirdly, we feel that migration is often perceived, at least in some of the high income countries, as a problem that needs to sort of be addressed. Whereas we want to make very clear that in reality, mobility of people is part of the economic development process, in particular of rural of structural transformation and agricultural transformation. So, um, so it's a much, much more complex and important phenomenon. Fourthly, we think that Migration is relevant for FAO's mandate. There is a close linkage, we believe, between agriculture and rural development on the one hand, and migration on the other hand. I mean, agriculture, rural development determine conditions in, agri in rural areas, which then affect people's migration decisions. So we feel that agri rural development have a severe role to play in um, determining um, migration flows. At the same time, migration can have an impact in agricultural areas on the agricultural sector and rural, and rural developments. Um, different impacts like labor market impacts, the short run impacts on, 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 the, on livelihoods of households, um, through remittances, etc. So um, there is this bi-directional relationship that we think is important. The evidence on this is not that clear and systematic. So we would try to sort of bring together the evidence that exists to give a, get a clearer picture about what is the relationship between migration on the one hand and agriculture and rural development on the other. So what is the focus of the report that FAO is uh, we're trying to prepare? Oh, first of all, we have to stay within, we're an organ that deals with agriculture, rural development, so we have to stay when, have a focus on rural areas. So what we will look at is migration flows that take place to rural areas, from rural areas, and between rural areas. So we will look at both international migration flows and internal migration flows.
We want to look at what are the drivers that uh, the fact that may determine migration decisions, the drivers that are active in the rural areas and specifically, and particularly in areas that have some relevance relations to agricultural and rural development. We um, want to look at what are the constraints that might exist to migration as well in rural areas, because often migration is uh, constrained by factors. So, you know, when the migration might be even be a desirable outcome, it is some, sometimes it's not possible for, for individual families to undertake migration because of the constraints they're facing, like financial constraints, gender constraints, and, and other types of constraints. Um, we want to look at the impacts of migration in rural areas um, in terms of you know, labor market impacts, impacts on livelihoods, impacts to remittances, and impacts of their relationship with diaspora and migrant communities, etc. Um, so this gives you a sort of a graphic illustration of what we're trying to focus on. So we have these migration flows that, you know, we have the rural areas on the left, we have cities and other countries, so migration flows happen between these various locations, between rural areas, from rural areas to cities, from rural areas to other countries, etc. So the areas we want, and you know, as well as between cities, and etc. So the areas we want to focus on are the arrows uh, that are in blue. We want to focus on the, f the f uh, also on the drivers and the impacts that take place or occur in the rural areas themselves. So that's in here what the focus of the report that we're trying to put together. So what are the, some of the key challenges we are facing in, 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 in doing this? First of all, it's very difficult to really assess the patterns and trends and characteristics of rural migration. What we call rural, by rural migration, we understand migration to rural areas, from rural areas, and between rural areas. Um, there are some conceptual problems. One is, what is how do you define rural versus urban? There are some differences between how does countries define these very diff differently. There may be reclassification of rural versus urban areas. So international comparison is complicated. Furthermore, the distinction clear between rural and urban areas is not is not necessarily as clear cut as in the past. We have in Fiji, we have a sort of rural urban spectrum that makes this type of analysis more difficult to, to handle. We have some serious data challenges for rural migration. There is not that much information available. There is lots of international migration, but for this specific area, we are really at a bit, we have some difficulty coming up with systematic evidence. Uh, we have another key challenge is the complexity of the migration patterns that we see. There are many types of migration, we have permanent migration. We have temporary migration. Seasonal migration is a very important phenomenon for, for rural areas. We would like to address all of them, and that makes it also a difficult. We have the complexity of migration decisions, which can be made at individual, the collective, at, or at the individual level, or collective decisions at household, or even, even community level. There are many complex reasons for migrating as well. It can be economic, non-economic. We have the distinct forced migration, which is what we see often in terms of protracted crisis, um, which we will also be looking at, and the, what we could term voluntary uh, migration, even though this distinction is not necessarily that clear cut either, because migration decisions are normally constrained, so we have the sort of rather continuum between forced and voluntary migration and a clear cut distinction. So, what are we planning to do with the report, the objective? We are trying to, um, it's important that we consider migration as part of the process of economic and social development. It's not something, it's not something that we have to stop or migration is bad. So, we want to be very clear about we are not considering either slowing or promoting migration from uh, to a rural area as an objective uh, in C. There may be situations of you know, protracted crisis where clearly migration is not a desirable phenomenon because it's associated with you know, very you know, unpleasant and violent situations. However, um, what we really want to do is help to understand the linkage that exists between migration and rural agricultural development and linkages in both directions. So we hope to be able to contribute to improve policy making in the area and not policy making in specific migration policies, policy, policy areas that relate to agriculture and rural development that have an implication or somehow relation with, with migration. So this is just a broad outline of the, the report, uh, the way we expect it to look. We'll have an introduction, we'll look at trends in rural migration, 
we we'll look at what the drives of rural migration and for chapter the impacts on rural communities and agricultural development. We have a special focus on protracted crisis of rural migration. We want to try to derive some policy implications in, in, in the final chapter. So uh, after, I would like to go into talk about one of the key challenges we're facing, which is documenting what has actually happened in terms of rural migration. Okay. Um, now we have a situation where um, international migration is pretty well documented. So we sort of start from there. Okay. This is UN data. It shows the um, international uh, the stock of international migrants in the world um, in 2015. So we, uh, at the last year, the first year was 1990, we have seen a growing number of international uh, migrants in both developed and developing regions. We can see the, the majority are in developed regions, but there are a lot of developing regions as well. So it's for probably a 60 to 40 breakdown. What we do not know is how many of these come from rural areas, how many come from urban areas, how many may have done a phased migration from rural to urban and then subsequently to, 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 um, um, to other countries. So we have an issue here, we're breaking this down. We can see that although the number of mig migrants has increased, the share in the total population is not, has not increased dramatically. That's the blue line, that's for the, that's for the world. As you can see it's, you know, it's you know, barely moved from a bit below to a bit more than 3%. However, in developed regions, that's the red line, the share of migrants, the total population has increased significantly, but not really as dramatically as many people probably think. I think I will skip this one uh, to move ahead. Um, now, concerning international migration, a lot of people probably have the perception of migration that is something that happens from developed countries toward developing country regions. In reality, the picture is much, much more nuanced than that. So we try to break down the UN migrate, migrant stock data by different types of migratory movements. We have from developed to developed. That represents 24% of the total. Developed to developing, that's 15 million people, 6%. Developing, from developing countries to developed countries, 80 million or 33%, but the largest portion of migrants that have moved from a developing country to another developing country. <coughs> That's something like 37%. So it's very important to bear in mind that migration is much more complex from this intra-developing country region. Migration is a very important uh, phenomenon that we need to keep in, keep in mind. Uh, let me so uh, give this one for reasons of time. Now, um, that's international migration. Internal migration is a much, much more complex issue. There is no systematic evidence the way that we have seen it for the international migration. There are some conceptual issues, like how do you define migration? Uh, migration as, as sensitive to the definition or the, let's say the basic geographic administrative unit that you use to determine whether people have migrated or not. So the whole series of issues have, that make comparability um, problematic. However, um, in a publication in 2013, uh, Bell and Edwards, uh, Charles Edwards came up with an estimate of <coughs> migrant stocks at uh, the global level. So they found that in uh, 2005, some 229 million people were living in a, within a different district. I think this is the highest level administrative uh, district we're talking about. In a different district within their own country relative to five years earlier. That's 3.7% of the, of the population. If we look at the lifetime migration, some 762 million people were living in a different location within the same country relative to the place where they were born. That's 11.7% of the population. That is four times as much as the international migrant stock that we saw before. So make clear that inter internal migration is a much more important significant phenomenon than international migration in terms of quantities at least. <clears throat> we have also looked at um, household surveys to get an idea about the relative importance of international and national migration. Um, so this is um, representative uh, household surveys from a set of uh, countries, but we have looked at the data is preliminary, but you can get an idea. So we have, the, we have the red line that shows the share of households that have at least one international migrant. 
the blue line is the share of households that have at least one internal migrant. So in most cases, the internal migration seems to be more significant than international migration. So um, what we really want to talk about, though, is rural migration. What happens in terms of migration to and from rural areas? And that is even more complicated to get information about than it is for um, the internal migration. So again, we have been trying to look here. There are different sources where you get information for specific countries. We can look at some household surveys to give an idea about um, um, these migration patterns. We have broken down the households here by urban households and rural households. We have looked at the share of urban households that have international and a national migrant perspective. The same thing for the rural households. And so the problem here is there's no really clear pattern coming out. In some countries, international migration is more significant than national. In some cases, migration is more significant from rural areas than from, uh, from, from urban areas. So it's very difficult to come up with <coughs> a clear picture from this. But this is preliminary work. We hope you're able to, be, to come up with some better and more precise estimates. Um, as we go along, okay. There are different um, examples of countries that do have information about migration patterns. For instance, India, which have done national sample surveys uh, at a regular rate. Um, so this, let's look at the columns on the right, the far column on the far right. That shows uh, data from 2008. We have broken down, migration broken down into rural, 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 urban urban rural and urban to urban. We can see that uh, at the bottom we have the rural rural. Something like 60% of the migration in India was rural to rural migration and 19.5% was um, uh, rural to urban. However, there is a clear distinction between males and females. For males, uh, we see that 27% uh, is rural to rural. The share of rural to urban is high as 39%. Whereas for women, it's a different breakdown, probably to do with motives for migration, which in India is often for women, it's, it's related to marriage, whereas for men, it's more like employment related. So that probably explains the difference. This is just to give you an idea of some of the, some of the challenges we face in finding out what is actually happening in terms of migration from rural areas. We also want to look at a set of other issues. I've already mentioned them relatively briefly. We want to look at, um, first of all, we want to, it's important that we consider migration patterns as part of an overall process of structural and rural transformation as the agricultural uh, productivity increases. So we may see some mig migratory patterns that, you know, this has been typically a part of, of historical parts of economic and and social development and rural transformation. So basically what uh, this graphic shows, this has the correlation between um, the x-axis, that's the share of the workforce in agriculture. Uh, the y-axis is the GDP per capita. So as GDP per capita in, um, increases, the share of the workforce in agriculture goes down. This is likely to have some impact on migration. Uh, and so he, this graphic shows um, the evolution of urbanization. So it's the, basically, it is the share of the rural population in the total population, which has been declining, and is expected to decline over the future. Now, it's the exact relationship between the structure in agriculture, and this is difficult to understand. We'll have an interesting paper discussing this in just, in, just, in just a few minutes, so I won't go more into detail on this. Some of the other issues we also want to look at are um, we want to look at what are the actual characteristics of the migrants, of the migrant households. Who are the people who migrate, and uh, and also why do they migrate? And so, we are looking for data also on what is the characteristics of migration, whether it's permanent, temporary, and seasonal. Seasonal migration is a particular tricky area because there is very little information and very little analysis. But we would like to cover this dimension as well. We want to look at migration in protracted crisis, um, both where we're talking about human-induced natural hazards. This includes also slow onset events like the impacts gradually of, of, of climate change. So I have two minutes, but I may need only one, so we'll see. If, okay, so I would like to conclude with just some observations. We would really like to have them get some feedback from you. Have you have any suggest what you think about the approach FAO is taking? If you have any suggestions for how to go about improving the analysis and how we can how we can do better, where we can find some of the information we're looking for. But some of the observations just weeks we see that levels of international migration is fairly well documented. We do not know how much of this is rural and how much is, is urban migration. 
However, insular migration is much less uh, well documented and data is more problematic. The comparability across countries is more problematic because migration is, is sensitive to the distance of migratory movements, that, you know, and the administrative and geographic units that on which migrating as estimates of migration are, are based. It is not clear which of two is really more important for rural areas. A further issue is we. Um, Data on the specific patterns of international migration is really scarce and problematic. We don't know that much at the global level about rural, urban, rural to rural migration, etc. We know very little about seasonal migration. So these are some, some of the big uh, challenges we are facing. In, finally, uh, the issue is of migration protracted crisis. That sort of sensitive definition of what you understand by a protracted crisis, do we include slow onset events, etc. We would really like to cover both. So these are some of the key questions we would like to sort of, that we are, uh, that we, that we are struggling with. And um, I would really like uh, a piece of feedback and reaction from the audience on some of these issues. So thank you for your attention. Okay.